I was asking for what is useful, this kind of the Pazir or the Pazir Aga or other schemes that are presented. And uh, in general, I think that the people that work with the information systems and that organize all, all the systems is very useful because you can put the conceptualization of one and the other in one side in, in the, or in another. Because in the other side, in our real life, we never deal with these kind of things are the theoretical uh, approaches, the people that works uh, for the theoretical questions that came with this conceptualization and spends a lot of time trying to put the indicator, the index there, 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 there. And at the end, we are remain asking, this is for what? Indicator, one indicator or index or what you want, it's a tool for communication. Not more than for this, it's a tool for communication. To communicate for the people in general, for your public that you want to arrive, or for the decisions, for the politicians or others that take decisions based in your information. And uh, the indicators are so good, then you could influence really what the people thinks, uh, thinks about one subject or the decisions can take one decision well supported or the decision that you want. To be clear, all the other things are very, very important. We, stay, we should remain a lot of years working in these subjects, but for the real world, this is not more than this. And we could develop the best, like Christine has said the best indicators. But if they don't understand the politicians or the public in general, if they don't understand the indicator, or if they don't like the indicators, because, because sometimes it's a question of like or not like the indicator, forget. They don't go, to, never use this kind of indicator. But it's always a time for that. What I try in my communication, this half an hour, a little bit more than this, but I can make this speech in five minutes or five hours, uh, depending. But I go try special to put us and what we have in place now. The conceptualization of the questions of desertification, we are discussing now also in Portugal what, what, are, what the people think about desertification because everybody speaks about certification and sometimes, many times, uh, we don't understand really if the people knows what they are talking. And by the other side, in Portugal, certification and uh, the, the lack of population, we call also this certification for these kind of questions. It seems that in Spain also there are a lot of uh, occasions where this could happen, but is only to say that questions of desertification came from the Rio in '92, uh, uh, with the other two conventions, biodiversity and climate change. Climate change, especially, it's economical political, a very high political decision. Biodiversity have a large task force with the scientists behind. And desertification, it's a gift for the poor, for the poor in the world, for the poor countries. They give first, was the first uh, convention to be adopted and was given to the African countries, after also to the Latin American or Asian, saying you have here your convention, you could deal your development questions, taking the possibility also to work with the others. Then these remain like that till this last uh, new Rio Plus 20 uh, convention that deals with another direction. And there are the beginning with some maps at the beginning, we 
really the numbers and the maps are very confused to understand where we have really this is foul, uh, foul sources in 2002 already but uh, if you take the, our figures about uh, aridity index and for the convention we go there for the convention are this climate line aridity index that defines what is affected or not affected areas all the other things talks about many 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 different things but about the areas where the convention is applied is the aridity index that defines the lines with what is inside and what is outside all the other things are talk talk till this moment nobody want to open the discussion what is defined in the convention and article 1 of the convention was very clear uh, is very clear about this aridity index and how make this exercise but there are <coughs> really a problem and this uh, next day exercise with gabriel should be a very challenge uh, task all around the world because the access to the meteorological information to make maps for the RDT index, precip precipitation and evapotranspiration are very complicated to assess in all the world because the meteorological organizations control the capacity to arrive to this, to this data. And tomorrow, you are going to see some global data organizations that are giving already to you some information. And this one that is presented here gives for all the world, all the world, the information about the RIT index is the first one, but for a defined set of work 1915 2000 uh, but at least we could compare with the pixel is not so larger than this but you can use this and this is very interesting also very uh, interesting for what we had, have to do with our convention the beginning if you have time we can explain why the convention also very clever uh, in the time in 95 have proposed to characterize, characterize the Annex 4 region, but says, like Christina F. Talk, that in the beginning, this is a work from 98 to 2003, and uh, with a lot of work and money spent at the uh, European level, they was defined. Um, a scheme uh, based in a European um, Environment Agency that uh, was called the Sensitivity to Certification and Drought Areas, as uh, Environment Sensitive Areas, with uh, four index climate index, soil index, vegetation, and land use. And after they mixed all of these, and uh, they mix one map only for all of this approach. Um, and this is all the indicators that uh, in the time and are the world maps, the static maps. We have, for example, in Portugal, we have only soil maps for 62. Uh, the, uh, the most important part of the country don't have soil maps also, but from somewhere they have, but we don't have access to this information. Well, it's a large story. We don't go to that, but saying that at least we can put in the same system different types of uh, information, climate, soil, vegetation, and land use. And this is the system that was the first approach for the Mediterranean level 
for not for only for the Annex four countries, from Portugal to Turkey and Israel, but also for the North African countries, and to prepare an action program, a political supported action program for these two regions of the world as defined by the Convention. And this, you have here one of the first approaches for the distribution of desertification in this time. You are going to see this is our first map to the sensitivity areas to desertification in Portugal. It's a joke because there are areas here for the empirical point of view you know that they are not desertified, that they don't have nothing to see with desertified. It was a, a, a very intensive scientific work. Are people that remain working in these kind of approaches? This is the 98 map, but uh, when the model don't approach the reality, something is wrong and is not the reality for sure. And uh, with the system that we are talking about, the, the as uh, for the four index, this is the soil index based in the one million map, and we have made this is was really the first approach for a very well defined sensitivity to certification in Portugal, and this is the map that supports now, till now. The, what we are developing to combat certification in Portugal. That have at the same time some uh, economical and social indicators added for this one. This is about population, also some information about uh, social uh, and economical questions. And all these questions are based in what we call the statistical systems already in place. We don't have to invent another data. We have to go to the data, to the national data that we, we can assess and take for our use. Now with the GIS, we can lie a municipality with the information, economical or population information that I have. And after we go see this after also, after to co combine the two kinds of information coming from the physical, ecological side and from the social or economic side. Well, from the story in Portugal and from the Mediterranean, we have developed other approaches that came with the uh, uh, Environment Space Agency that have supported this Desert Watch process. And uh, with these kind of things, and it's also very important to talk about this and don't mix, because when the scale, the number, of, the dimension of the pixel for a global uh, approach for the desertification is one thing. For a national approach, we are talking something more closely, and for local, sub-regional approach and other things. And for ecosystem approach, we are talking about the local, very local approach. We are talking about the management unity, one property, one area of intervention with a very clear uh, management. Uh, a people, we know very well the people, it's a property, it's a group of properties or something that we can manage, we can contract for an act there. And also the indicators are very, very, very uh, developed for this approach and could be not so uh, deep approaches for the other ones. When we're beginning at this, we are talking about one kilometer for one kilometer. And it's, not, it's necessary don't every time to, to have our um, ideas very clear about this because we cannot change uh, all of this at the same time. This is the evolution of the information. Also, when we begin dealing with more uh, detailed information, variance of uh, vegetation also is the variance of the climate in the Mediterranean area. And this is something that is 
I always question, it's not a question, it's our life. What we need to know is what, what the variations are happening every time. And uh, desertification is, by the convention, this is land degradation. First, we are talking about the land degradation and the buzzword is land. And everybody knows what is land. Is soil more same thing, the vegetation, the activities on the soils and so on. It's a complex of things. And in these arid, semi-arid and dry subhumid areas, climate defi uh, the definition resulting from different, different factors, including climate variations and human activities. These uh, climate uh, uh, question and the implications of desertification in climate change only now appears in a real dimension and they are taking in consideration for the future also for climate change convention. At least in Mediterranean area, desertification and climate change are the same questions and are dealing together now. This is the definition real for the, these climate uh, limits and what is affected areas. And this is a political error, but was made and is inscribed in the convention because affected areas are simultaneous affected or treated areas. This means that when we see one area that is completely degraded, I could say, yeah, yes, is affected by desertification in an arid, subhumid uh, uh, areas or others, they are affected. But what is potential affected? All the areas under the limit of aridity are potentially affected or not? If we have time, we could stop here and begin a little discussion about this, how to prepare our works for, for these developments. And what is really land degradation? And uh, this definition is also very important because are talking about the loss of uh, productivity, biological or economical productivity in different situations. And this is really what we call, call land degradation, and we could see after how to deal with this. Well, you know that in the Convention we are now dealing with a strategic call, a new strategy that was adapted in Madrid 2007. And this is a strategy for 2000, 2008 for 2018. And um, was with this really that we beginning uh, defining uh, what impacts and uh, what strategical indicators we have to adopt to deal with the convention questions. And we have already in 2007 defined what we have called the strategical indicators. You know that the Convention has a CST, a Committee for Science and Technology, and for sure the scientists want to study everything, develop the studies, large studies, try to improve more and more uh, knowledge, and they, after this pr basical proposal, it's not so basical, if you compare this step for the next steps, uh, after they came with uh, 11 indicators, and this was prepared for Buenos Aires, two, uh, 2009 was the time for the 11 indicators. A large discussion, a scientific discussion. Part of the indicators are the same, but part are not. And don't forget that uh, the strategy have defined 
by priorities that the first uh, question is to treat, to work with the uh, populations in the affected areas. The second question is, are the ecosystems. And the third question are the synergies with other process conventions and so on. And are the, the last one are the, the governance of the system. But uh, we are talking priorities for the, for the people. And there are a lot of information around these information and indicators that was proposed for that. We know, we know every time that we cannot deal with 20 indicators. We cannot work with even with 10 indicators. If you work with the process, forget if you are talk, I'm talking about certification, but if I, for the political communication, I begin dealing with 10 indicators. When I arrive to the 10 indicators, talk about in the 10 indicators, the people have already forget the first, the second, and the third. This is a problem of relations between people. And this is a problem of communication. And this is a problem that we, we cannot forget when we decide how to deal, how to work with this kind of subject. This is why, even in uh, Shangwen, Korea, uh, already in the beginning of this millennia, they have we have made one exercise, but Portugal and Spain have <coughs> participated in this exercise. Eight countries in the world have been used for that, and we have made one exercise of application of all of this and came for 24 indicators. Forget. In Namibia, uh, last year, we have adopted these six indicators, two indicators for each uh, strategic objective that are not for governance. But I remember all the times that we are talking about six plus two indicators, because there are two indicators that are always present when we are talking about these six indicators. Are the limit of aridity, are the, the basic climate definition where are desertification. The second one is the population in these affected, affected what we have seen is affected areas uh, that we are talking. And these basic indicators that are not in this group of six indicators came for what we call in our national action program that have finished, the preparation have finished now, are this, the set of indicators that are the basic that we could, we have to adopt for our national action program. But the reality is that you have to use this six plus two, but you can use all of the others at national level that you won't use more than this, but we have to use this one. This, this is by the convention, you, you have to use these, 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 these indicators. Don't forget this six plus two and the others, you can decide and use all of the indicators that you want to use. And the first one is about poverty, poverty rate and relative income. The second one is water availability, including access to, for humans and animals. And this is to improve the living conditions of the populations in affected areas. The third are changes in land cover status. Uh, the archaeological questions of the landscapes and the land use are very important in this, and we, we are going to see how important it is. And the third one is changes in land productivity. Now, productivity, okay? Five, you are talking about already, is already talk about the other conventions. 
five are the changes in the organic carbon stocks in the air or in the soils, and the six are the trends and distribution of selected species. We are talking about biodiversity, and I don't know why, but they have adopted to use a bird index, something about uh, vascular plants, but they have added in Vinduk a note saying that when the questions about structural diversity are more developed and we should adopt this structural indicator or index, we should begin working for this proposal with the structural indices and indicators of the biodiversity. It's a challenge for these people that are working in the subject, but uh, it's also an open box that we need to work. And uh, also, have been defined four approaches to the work with the Convention. One is potential affected areas. This is the areas where the desertification potential. You remember the, when we are talking about the potentiality of the affected areas, we are the, the potential in general are where it is possible, but where the sustainable land management intervention are sufficient to control the certification and con uh, the, the certification process. The most important part of susceptible to certification areas in Portugal are areas like that, potentially, but not affected. And this came also with our culture. In the Mediterranean region, we have learned to deal with certification questions and problems. And many of our land use, our land interventions, are already adaptations, answers for the, the certification of the climate and for the treats of certification. The most important part, we go to make the balance for Portugal about this. The second are the areas at risk of being affected, where the, the concentration of drivers for certification have been detected, but uh, only at risk of, of having, uh, we, we could only look for risk and where we can make interventions prevention intervention measure to increase the option to deactivate drivers. And for sure we know what drivers we are talking. Third group, actual affected areas, where the drivers are growing in evidence of land degradation uh, and where we have to take active policies active interventions to combat desertification. Something for like 26% of Portugal, continental Portugal at this moment. We have been talking about many complicated things in the past, but now we know exactly that we have a part is important. But what we know, don't know in these 26 is what is inherent in desertification. This means areas where the drivers of certifications have happened in the past, but there are no more present now, and where we cannot combat the drivers, intervent make intervention for the drivers, the only thing that we could wait is that the natural rehabilitation of the area should occur, or if necessary, is more, something more complicated, we could adopt light interventions for natural recovery of these areas. And me, this makes the scenarios for the managers of desertification now. This is, was something that was not so clear before Vinduk, but after Vinduk, also, this takes clear 
for what we need the, the indicators and how I have to deal in every piece of my country with these kind of questions. Take note, because this is for clarification of what we have to do, this is very important. Uh, we come back for this map uh, for the uh, alpha century data of heredity and the definition. Look what uh, are Portugal in this context. And this is also for is import, also important. And this came the information for we forget forget uh, for a lot of times the questions from uh, uh, Canarias, Madeira, and Cabo Verde, the Macaronesian Islands. There are regions for everything, but uh, there are Macaronesian regions for biodiversity, but there are, there are not Macaronesian regions for desertification. It's something that it's a problem of Portugal, Spain, and Cabo Verde that we need to begin working for the near future. Uh, you have here Madeira. There are no really problems of climate desertification in Azores, but in Madeira, this is already what we have um, empirical known in the in the past, and from the Peninsula Ibérica, what we have, and this is also our developments in the last years, last uh, times. And we are talking about series of half a century or 13 years or 10 years in this side. And for sure, there are completely different, this kind of approaches. But what the convention defines is this approach for this series of 13 years, OK? If you are talking, if you are dealing, if you are working with the identity index to the definition of susceptible or affected areas are this kind of series that are the orientation of the convention. All the other, we have adopted this in Portugal because our first uh, national action program begins in 99th and we are making now uh, one another. And we try to see what changes occurs between the beginning and the end in the aridity index also in this context. Because it, and the numbers change a lot because from the first uh, national action program, we are talking in 36% of the potential affected areas and we arrive at 8, 2000 with 15.8. And if you talk in, in 10 years, this is not a comparable uh, for uh, convention proposals. We are talking about 63% of the country uh, fact, potentially affected by desertification. The variability, this yellow, is the area that have increased in these uh, 13 years. And uh, now the information about the zero information about population. First one is about climate. This is about population. The first work is to transform these uh, climate maps in uh, with the limits of the counties or the municipalities to change these from one side to another side. It's a dominance of uh, the occurrence of the aridity from one side, and we made this one. And after we put the information of population or other social or economic information, and we go directly working in these kind of maps. OK? Uh, and this is information uh, density, uh, population, only to show that uh, in this time, the south of Portugal, the density is the same from the Sahara and the Sahel. We are not so far. And some parts of Spain also. Not Turkey. <laughs> no. But uh, Portugal and Spain have some areas with a very low density. And this is the, the last uh, uh, population census in Portugal what we have uh, as density or increase or decrease of the population. And it's clear that the most sensitivity areas for certification are the areas that are decreasing in population. It's so clear. There's nothing to do with this. 
Uh, this is uh, at uh, county level, the same expression. This is less than five uh, habitants for square meters, a kilometer meter, a kilometer square, yeah. And this is the, the importance of agriculture population in the total. The red one is more or the brown are more important and this came also from the administrative information. And I think that we go to talk one, in one, uh, one afternoon about this sustainability of the population. This is our poverty rates, the basical before and after social transfer for the population. We are not in very good conditions in Portugal, uh, not only now, but in the last decades. And this is the, the economical capacity by municipality. This is the average, it's uh, 100. And we are talking that uh, all these brown and yellow are less than uh, the general of the, the country. And the increasing is in the last times. Uh, in mortality, infantile mortality, Portugal in general for all the country have a very good, good references in this domain. But, but there are some some municipalities where we are at African level also. And we need to think about the political decisions that goes to these uh, areas. And these are the social grants, these things that uh, could increase or decrease the poverty in the countries. This is, was very important in 2010 and came in decreasing, but uh, we could see uh, by percentage how important is some affected areas these are. This is the second indicator, the water availability. In general, all Portugal also is blue, is good, is in good conditions, but in general, and we are talking about, now yeah, I'm presenting for Portugal, the indicators that we have adopted in Vinduc. It was already one exercise that we have applied to Portugal, trying to, to see how far we can go. There are some municipalities don't have, that don't have information, but in general they have. And also, in general, we could say that there are some municipalities with problems that we need to answer. And some of them, again, are in susceptible areas. Some of them even in very irrigated areas, this one. This is what we need. And now beginning arriving to the historical questions of land use. This is a graphic that shows the increase of population in Portugal in general, beginning, beginning in <laughs> 1000. What came and really when we beginning increasing the population and uh, where we are. But we we beginning decreasing now. But we are here. And uh, for land use, these maps shows you when uh, we have increased the, the, our political intervention for the development of cereals on the time we try to uh, agriculture, in the time we try to give uh, food, bread for every people, and we have made cereals everywhere, in the poor, in the good soils, or in the poor, we have put cereals in everywhere. But it was so complicated that uh, <laughs> some hours after we came here, and in general, the agriculture land use are decreasing in general in this time. At the same time, 
some, uh, there are a little increase of uh, shrubs, but special a large increase of forest areas that should be decreased a little bit, but the general trends is to increase. And we have information. This is something that is very important, really, because we have to know for general information in everywhere. If you have already in the past, in the historical, some interventions in Portugal, beginnings in the, before the man was Rome, before the Phoenicians, before, I don't know, in the, in the Paleolithic, the hand and Mesolithic beginning, some of the most important interventions for the Sri Liculture beginnings in the really in the Neolithic area, forty thousand years ago, and this is very well marked in our territory. But after times for times, we have this increasing or decreasing of this intervention, and some of the areas. Some of the areas that are, we are going to see after tomorrow have imprinting there some marks of that presence. The mines, San Domingo mines, this is an area that beginning be occupied and exploited by mining in the Roman times at least, and some of the intervention for the soil degradation have beginning in this time. This don't means that after, in the end of 18th century and the middle of the last century also, don't came again other intervention for land degradation. But there are different scales and we need to, un to understand how far we have to go each time. This is why this indicator <coughs> in the changes in land cover status is so important. And also, trying to separate different types of uh, agriculture and different types of forest. Because it's not black and white, there are no good forest and bad agriculture are also good agriculture and we, are, we have also a bad forest intervention in fields. And we need to, t to deal with this kind of approach. And we are going to see some plantations, eucalyptus for example, but not so only one, that uh, should present and some marks of degradation in these conditions. And this is our information. It's to show that 90% of the irrigated areas of the country are in the susceptible to certification areas. This is an empirical question. The politicians don't have to do a lot uh, for to make this decision. And this is a clever decision, because in the Mediterranean region, uh, hot conditions, it's a very co good condition for the high productivity if I have water. The question in all the times is that I have very hot days, and I don't have water and everything could be drier. But if I have water to supply, oh, this is the best. Our less productivity is exactly because we don't have water during the summer and the water came when there are no hot conditions, where we are frozen and so on, and the plants also, and there are not an increase of productivity. But if, if you could deal with this, okay. But even we have made a large intervention for build irrigated areas. And on the last 10 years in Portugal, only one region, and this is Alentejo, and Alentejo is the area with the most bigger, the Alqueva Dam that Christine had beginning, was put in place, is the only that don't have regression in irrigated areas. All the others, public investments or private investments have regression in the occupation of irrigated areas. 
where is our money? This is Pashuraj. Also, some historical questions lied to the European uh, agriculture policies. And this is the new types of uh, agriculture, ecological agriculture, uh, the areas that remain with uh, herbs coverture, the direct uh, uh, putting uh, uh, cement, 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 seeds, putting direct seeds in, in the soil, not using machinery and so on. And this is the data of the last 10 years. And the most important of these interventions are exactly in the most affected area. By general commons, says a common, the people adopt the most ecological, the good uh, intervention exactly in the best bad uh, land degradation uh, infrastructure. It's not a political decision. But this is what happened in the last 10 years. And this is the information coming from the agriculture census. Okay. And this is good examples to show that we should believe in our humanity because we are attentive what we have to do. Uh, these are the changes in general in forest. Uh, this afternoon, uh, José Uva go to shows uh, this in detail, but special, I want to special to call your attention from some oaks that have nine, 93 and 99% in the susceptible areas for desertification, or the pinus pinia umbrella or a pine that have 97%, or the new plantations, some of them we are going to see that are 90% made in the last years, are made exactly in the susceptible to desertification areas. And this is a, a synthesis, an abstract of what we know, what we know about the historical interventions in the fields. Uh, this is the last inventory. Uh, José goes to detail this. And this is what is RDT lim limits and the distribution of uh, home oak, cork oak that uh, before in 69th was uh, called uh, the barrier, the limit of desertification in Portugal, and in the last years became inside the barrier. The aridity goes fast than that. But there are also something that I need to talk your attention. The more sharing species, uh, um, the junipers, not uh, from the mountain of Strela, but three of our junipers that are very sharing, occurs exactly in the enlarged area or susceptible to desertification in Portugal. What means that probably these aridity conditions have already occurred in the past. And your Archaeology have to deal also with the natural vegetation and especially with this natural vegetation that they are adapted for the more shary conditions, how long they go. This is a very this is a very sensitive question that somebody should take for a new study, a new PhD or a thing like that in the, in the near future. Uh, and the, the fourth indicator is the changes in land productivity. Here are only NDVI, but uh, I don't know if um, Gabriel Del Bar will go to talk uh, about this because it's Gabriel and the Estação de Zonas Áreas de, de Almeria that have developed this for Portugal, for Spain, also for North Africa and so on in all the world. This land, these uh, uh, changes in land productivity is made for 2000, 2010, 
and gives you the states of the land productivity, gives you the very degraded and degraded, the mature, uh, the reference over performing anomaly or underperforming here, what this is a balance between what uh, by rain and by soils is expected in every, each pixel, and what we could read by uh, satellite image, what have produced exactly in this area. If you have uh, if the balance is positive, we are talking about this kind of classes. If they are negative, we are talking about this, this one. This overperform anomaly represents areas in general where, for example, there are irrigation. There are more water and are more production given exactly because there are irrigation. By the contrary, this one means that was expected that we could find something there and it is very low, the productivity. But basically, our special areas for intervention are these three ones. This is the productive cereals and forest. Mature, we are talking about natural areas, special. Uh, and reference performance, this is the ideal. But uh, at some times we have the, all these concepts explained in this. At the same time, we have decrease or decrease the trends between the, all of these e 10 years. There are four image, four satellite image for each year. This means 40 images and gives you the decrease in time and also with aridity. And you could see this hard area of decrease of aridity in all the country. And this is the synthesis that is given this in state. And we can talk about 28% of the territory in the great land. But at the same time, we can talk in 22% in general of mature and rougher reference states. This means in good conditions and 30 eight, 39 percent, something that is productive. But by trends, more degraded between the 10 years, we have only 1.69 percent of the territory. It's a piece. And there are the priority of intervention of our national action program. We need to, to make our intervention there. This is exactly there. There are not other. This is there. But at the same time, during these 10 years, 22% of the ter territory have increased the productivity. This means that we have worked very well in Portugal after. We have to explain why, <laughs> where. <laughs> but we have worked very well in this, during this period because we have recuperated 22% of the territory for that. We have made, because that taking the, these areas, we have made two maps with the hotspots exactly calling attention for the areas that we need to trade, to deal, and also something that we have called the green spots that are the areas where the productivity have increased and we need to go there to try and explain why. Why we have increased there, what type of culture we have made, what type, type of approach we have there. This is some uh, Portugal are the most uh, affected uh, country by forest fires in the last uh, uh, 20, 13 years. And here we demonstrate that there are no direct uh, relation between fires and land degradation. By the contrary, in general, more than 95% of the areas that have burned during this period are areas where the movement of the productivity have decreased a little, but immediately after uh, have, you have a recuperation. This is only factual. We, this is something also that needs to be studied very careful, 
But these results show this direction. Five indicators, stocks of uh, carbon. We have made these with already, and we are working in the new campaign to take information in these. We have a network, it's a European network, all the countries, including Turkey, Spain, all the European countries also have information, have, this, have part of this network for the forest areas, but network occup are forest and agriculture areas. And with this, we have made the modulation of the distribution of the carbon on soil. This is our model for Portugal and we have what we have concluded. And finally, the information about the global wild bird index that is the biodiversity indicator adopted. This is something that came special with the agriculture policies. If you go to the Rural Development Program, they use exactly the same indicators. And at the global, universal level, they have adopted this, and this is the application for, for Portugal during this 2000-2010 period for Portugal and from Madeira, where are affectation by desertification, saying what we have and what kind of information we can use. I think that one of these days we need, uh, we go to see these areas and these areas after tomorrow, but one of these days we need to beginning building at least for the vascular uh, formations of the, our country, some approach like this. And uh, something saying that uh, for this direction, the people really like very much talk about the K species, the mythical species that are in the mind of the people. And we need to give him some uh, support that also answers for this kind of approach. But what, what, is, what we have to do is, if we will have another, the wild bird index and now more than need this. Till the beginning of these courses, for your thinking during the afternoon, the evening, the dinner, and so on, and for the discussion in the last days, I, I give you something that was adopted inside the convention to thinking. We are so different that for sure we are different questions and different forms to view this world. And the, the, these two questions is, what is in your region, in your country, the greatest achievement of your country in relation to combat certification, land degradation, or mitigating the effects of drought? Second question, what achievement could not have been accomplished without the existence of the Convention? If there are. It's a challenge on the last day, if you want, or for the people that want, we should make a baseline from this so enlarged representation what we think about these kind of things. And for my side, you stay with copy of these, you have some references, and from my side, I have finished my intervention. <laughs>